Hey there, everyone. Pastor Tim here from the Church at West Shore. Welcome to our daily devotion and prayer time. This is the Friday edition, and we are moving into Leviticus chapter 11. Leviticus chapter 11. Up to this point, we have seen the uh, instructions for the priest and putting the uh, sacrificial system into work and, and into action. Today, as we move into Leviticus 11, this is where God gives the, the children of Israel the instructions concerning uh, their dietary restrictions, things that God said this is uh, what you should do and what you should not do. And so we are beginning in verse 1. God says to us, Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. Of all the land animals, these are the ones you may use for food. You may eat any animal that has completely split hooves and choose the cud. You may not, however, eat the following animals that have split hooves or that chew the cud, but not both. The camel chews the cud, but does not have split hooves. So it is ceremonially unclean for you. The hyrax chews the cud, but does not have split hooves so it is unclean. The hare chews the cud, but does not have split hooves, so it is unclean. The pig has evenly split hooves, but does not chew the cud, so it is unclean. You may not eat the meat of these animals for even or even touch their carcasses. They are ceremonially unclean for you. Of all the marine animals, these are the ones you may use for food. You may eat anything from the water if it has both fins and scales, whether taken from the salt water or from streams. But you must never eat animals from the sea or from rivers that do not have both fins and scales. They are detestable to you. This applies both to little creatures that live in shallow water and to all creatures that live in deep water. They will always be detestable to you. You must never eat their meat or even touch their dead bodies. Any marine animal that does not have both fins and scales is detestable to you. These are the birds that, you, that are detestable to you. You must never eat them. The griffon vulture, the bearded vulture, the black vulture, the kite, falcons of all kinds, ravens of all kinds, the eagle owl, the short-eared owl, the seagull, hawks of all kinds, the little owl, the cormorant, the great owl, the barn owl, the desert owl, the Egyptian vulture, the stork, herons of all kinds, the hoopoe, and the bat. You must not eat winged insects that walk along the ground. They are detestable to you. You may, however, eat winged insects that walk along the ground and have jointed legs so they can jump. The insects you are permitted to eat include all kinds of locusts, bald locusts, crickets, and grasshoppers. All other winged insects that walk along the ground are detestable to you. The following creatures will make you ceremonially unclean. If you touch any of their carcasses, you will be defiled until evening. If you pick up their carcasses, you must wash your clothes and you will remain defiled until evening. Any animal that has split hooves that are not evenly divided or that does not chew the cud is unclean for you. If you touch the carcass of such an animal, you'll be defiled. Of the animals that walk on all fours, those that have paws are unclean. If you touch the carcass of such an animal, you'll be defiled until evening. If you pick up its carcass, you must wash your clothes and you will remain defiled until evening. These animals are unclean for you. So we'll stop there. That takes us through verse 28 and there's some more instructions to uh, continue with. But as we move forward to the New Testament, let's, let's acknowledge that in uh, the vision that God gave Peter, um, it's made clear that what God blesses is clean, and so the dietary laws and restrictions that were put into place no longer um, govern us. But let's go back and let's just talk about why God would put such restrictions on his people. We, we could talk about the dietary benefits, the sanitary benefits, but here is what we need to remember that whenever God does something, especially when it is related to humans, it is to provide for us the optimum 
situation for our lives. And we can look back and look at the things that went on in, in the culture back during this time, but suffice it to say that there were reasons that God had these dietary laws and it was to provide the optimum situation for the children of Israel. The same is true of us today. It may not be in the dietary laws, although to be sure, there are some restrictions that God gave the children of Israel that if we would adhere to still, we would probably benefit from. But there are other things that God says, this is what you should do. This is what you should not do. You can you, you have the right to do them, but you'll have to suffer the consequences. And so God has called us to look at our lives and say, OK, what has God said? What? does he want for me and what is the optimum for my situation you see god does everything with a plan and a purpose and that's true of our his relationship with us he wants the best for us and he wants us to live according to his plan and his precepts and and his doctrine so let us strive for that today will you pray with me father we come to you and acknowledge that life is not easy there are difficult situations. We all go through them. We acknowledge, though, that that the, the things that you have instructed us to do or to not do, these are things that are intended for the ultimate um, situation for us. Help us to look at each and every area of our life and say, OK, what does God want for me here? And then help us to seek out those things. There's so many areas of our lives, Lord, that we could look at and say, OK, I'm not following what God wants here. So let me make the necessary changes, not because you are uh, putting a thumb on us, Lord, but because you want the best for us. So help us to, to strive to live that way today. And we'll give you thanks and praise as always in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I trust you'll have a fantastic Friday. Look forward to seeing you in worship this weekend at, uh, on Sunday at 11 o'clock at West Shore as we continue in our series, Hazardous Prayers. We've been on quite a journey praying some of the, the most difficult prayers and expecting God to answer. So join us if you're able to. And until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you and give you peace. And may you fall just a little bit deeper in love with Jesus today. Take care. May God bless you.